cool. cool. Recording started. So, uh, getting, getting pretty, pretty crazy echo. echo. Inside the second. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So, this, so is this is the, is the ninth, ninth CAD, CAD, CAD community, community call. call. And, and on this, on this call, call, we're going, we're going to, to have, have the, wonderful the wonderful team, team uh, from, from Power, Power Pool, Pool Token, Token Engineering, Engineering uh, Ethic, Ethic Hub, Hub and, and, and more, more uh, who, uh, who have been, have been examining, examining the balancer, the balancer liquidity, liquidity pool system, system and, and working, working on a CAD, on a CAD, CAD model, model to, to um, um, give some more insights and, and, and ability to, to work, work within, within the balance ecosystem, ecosystem and, uh, and uh, do kind of do rigorous, rigorous design. design. So before, so before we, we jump, jump into that, that I wanted to I wanted give the opportunity, the opportunity for anyone new here, here to introduce, introduce themselves, themselves or, or you know, anyone, anyone who's here, who's here at, all. at all. If you have, if you have um, um, any uh, CAD, CAD, CAD models you've been models working on, any that you're interested in, just wanted to open the floor up for a few minutes for anyone to say hi, where you're coming in from, what your interests are, uh, what, uh, you what you may be working, working on, on um, or, or feel free feel to just free listen, to listen in if you've got, got uh, other things other going, things going on. on. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll start, start and model the model process. The process. Uh, I'm, uh, Jeff I'm Jeff from, from the Common the Stack, stack also, also helping out at, at Block Science and CAD CAD, uh, and, working and working to, to uh, kind of kind of improve the templates for this kind of algorithmic policy setting and how we can design stable and regenerative Web3 ecosystems. Um, um, is there anyone, is there else, anyone who else who wants to, to uh, introduce uh, themselves quickly, quickly or, uh, or uh, what, your what your interests are, what, your, what, your, what models, models you may be you working, may be working on? on? Okay, I guess I'll go next. I'm Andrew. I um, previously uh, did the um, CAD-CAD model for the common stack, and now it's taken over by um, Santiago and Vito. Um, and now I got roped into the CAD CAD balancer simulation. And uh, yes, so hello everybody. Um, I guess Angela goes next. You're muted. You're muted. Thanks for letting me know. Um, Angela, member of the Balancer Simulations team, uh, worked over the last couple of months with Vasily, Andrew, and Raul on producing general model, as we'll introduce it in a minute. Otherwise, I'm busy with TE Academy, um, producing new courses and running research groups as the Balancer Simulations brand new research group that will be kicked off in April. We'll tell you more in a minute. Sebastian, what are you working on? Hi, I'm um, I'm in Canada, Toronto. I took the CAD CAD course, the, the the intro course for learning how to use the tool. I've been trying to wrap my head around on on, on balancing models from Bancor, SDR, all kinds of things. And this is one of the key things that I want to wrap my head around and, and learn to use. So I'm looking forward to this talk specifically. So um, are we doing this run around, Vasily? Yeah, hi all. So I'm Vasily. I'm working last year in uh, last year's DeFi. So from autumn, I, I'm helping PowerPool. This is a protocol building on top of Balancer, some you know portfolio management tools like ETF, smart, smart ETFs, and so on. So I was engaged in Balancer since uh, September in the research around IMMs and joined the balancer simulations team in december with angela raul and andrew so last month we are working on cut cut model and also on dynamic mm stuff so and i think that imms and particularly dynamic mms is something like next step for imms that will allow to build a really cool products that will make all us happy so <laughs> this is why i'm doing it and uh, i will present research roadmap Awesome. awesome. 
Is there, is there anybody, anybody else who wants to, to introduce, introduce themselves, themselves quickly? quickly? I know I there know may be a few, a few people watching, watching and, and working and on other things at the same, same time, so don't feel, so pressured. feel pressured. But if anyone, but if anyone is, is, wants to introduce, wants to introduce yourself to the CAD CAD community and your interests or your background, feel free. I'll leave the floor open for another minute or two. Yeah, Jeff. I may ask, Letty, I, I met you in some of the channels. I would be super keen to learn more what you are up to and your background, what brought you here. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, all. I'm Letty. I've been just wondering these communities from the common Slack channels. And I was attending your presentation last week about Gitcoin. And I think I. I I want to know more about what you're doing with Balancer. And well, looking forward to your presentations, that's why I'm here. And yes, like very involved in the various communities and yes, yeah, happy no to know more about your work in the academy. Great, great. Okay. okay, and Sebastian, and good, Sebastian to good to know you're in Toronto, Toronto actually. actually. I'm just around, I'm just the, around the Bay, uh, uh, just south just of uh, Hamilton, Hamilton, down to Niagara, Niagara Way. Way. I would say, I let's meet up in chat, but, but not the best time, uh, lockdowns, uh, lockdowns and so, and so on. And so on. <laughs> oh, I thought you guys were not in lockdown. I'll come out for a beer right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice it's down nice in wine down country. country. There's a lot of space to be outside with no one else around. 50 miles further and we can roam around freely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Well, um, well I'm, happy, I'm to happy, happy to turn it over to the, over presenters. To the presenters. I'm sure you have sure some you really, have really interesting stuff to share with us, so we can spend the rest of the, 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 the hour on uh, learning, about learning about CAD CAD, CAD balancer balance simulations. simulations. Okay, I'll pull up um, the slides, and I then I can't see anything anymore. So please raise your voice if something's wrong. Uh, otherwise, I won't notice. Okay. Now, let me uh, introduce briefly what this project is all about. Team, as mentioned, Vasily from PowerPool, Raul Martinez, CTO Ethic Hub, myself and Andrew were um, discussing late uh, 2020 uh, that we have actually, we are working on two projects with a need for simulations uh, for balance of pools namely PowerPool, um, exploring dynamic weights changing to maximize LP value and Ethic Hub um, planning to use balancer pools as a safety module to cover loan defaults. So you see pretty different aspects and pretty different application cases. And we we four, we met in, um, I guess, ecosystem value flows courses. So we, we knew each other and thought, hey, it would be so cool to have a general CAD CAD model to build on that. And this is not only relevant for PowerPool or Ethic Hub, this is relevant for many more balancer use cases and many more projects. So we decided, okay, let's build an open source model and simulations. And um, we got a grant from balancer and from PowerPool to work on that over then in total of four months. And this is what we have now. So briefly, um, we have a GitHub repo with the CatCat model and Jupyter notebooks um, for having a first real uh, pool available and um, yeah, enabling explorations and particular metrics, and then adding more and more notebooks on uh, then new simulation cases and new research questions. Then there is also a GitHub documentation, Git book documentation on all things balancer simulation. So um, core balancer math, the functions we implemented in Python, how to add transaction data, uh, also limitations and verification of the model. So uh, hopefully everything you need to get started with balancer simulations. And yeah, we hope to expand this and let us know if you're missing elements and information. Then there is a Discord channel. So um, we established a bridge, uh, token engineering to balancer to onboard the community. 
and yeah, to ask on questions, uh, pick up topics that are relevant for the community when it comes to simulations. And uh, we published a couple of articles on the model, on the, the core elements, um, understanding balancer pools, and also on some technical solutions uh, and challenges we found. So this is all available. I'll be happy to share the links in the Discord as well. And yeah, feel free to join, if you haven't, this Balancer Simulations Discord channel, either via the Token Engineering Discord or via the Balancer. Okay, um, what I also want to mention before we dig into the details is that we are going to kick off a new research group dedicated to Balancer pools and the variety of application cases and, of course, Balancer V2. Uh, to be launched in, I think, now. And um, this research group is going to start end of April, running three months. You will find it via tokenengineering.org. Uh, please apply if you're interested in this topic. Uh, our goal is to create a network of researchers around balancer pools, about the, the challenges for um, the variety of application cases and we have some first research topics in mind. Here some more information on who are we looking for. So we are looking for three types of participants. A DeFi projects, B individual researchers and C ecosystem partners. Um, ecosystem partners and community partners because we want to spread the word and um, uh, yeah hope to find projects and protocols that are supporting open science and open source infrastructure for rigorous token engineering in the DeFi space. Then, of course, DeFi projects like PowerPool with their particular questions um, benefiting from the network uh, of, of skills of various token engineers with their perspective and creativity around simulations and answering on, on the questions that are pressing and individual researchers, of course. So uh, we, are, we are aiming for a wide range of background like finance, economics, computer science, engineering, um, data science. So whoever is interested to join, um, no matter if already familiar with balancer pools or um, interested to run agent-based models in the DeFi uh, sector and, and um, in modeling, in general modeling in the DeFi sector, please join. So just to let you know, I will share the links later on and you are all invited and welcome to join this research initiative. That is again, Funded by Balancer. Quick question, Quick question Angela. Angela. Are you sharing, Are you your, sharing screen? your screen? I should. I don't see, I don't it, see coming it coming up. up. So. If so. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Wait. So we... I've been showing around 50 slides in the meantime. So should I start from scratch? No, I don't think so. Okay, can you see it now? It, no, it says that you finished the screen sharing recently. Funny. Okay, what's the problem? But have you ever been able to see it? Yeah, I, I saw it for maybe 20 seconds and after that it finished. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not sure if I can show it full screen then. Here we go. But if we can live with um, this version, okay. Can you see it? Yes. Works okay. Fine. Cool. Yeah. Uh, right. Again, briefly, this is the participants for what we are looking for: balance of simulations. You can apply via tokenengineering.org. I will share the links later on. And now this is what we now have available for everyone 
the open source GitHub repo with the CatCat model and notebooks, GitHub documentation, the Discord channel, and a couple of articles on uh, balancer simulations. Now, before we take a closer look on how we implemented this uh, in CatCat, let me give you a brief overview. So what our goal was to provide a general model for Balancer V1, we, we started in December 2020. So what we wanted to have was uh, the Balancer pools functionality with swap all asset deposits, single asset deposits, the join swap, um, withdrawals, all asset and single asset. So the typical um, full scope functionality of Balancer pools. Um, we wanted to have access to state variables like the token assets and balances in the pool, the token weights, pool shares, the fee rate and the fees generated in every single transaction. And uh, what we also wanted to have in the model is uh, US dollar prices because US dollar prices and external price signals are very relevant for a particular range of simulation when it comes, for example, to arbitrage trades. Um, we'll discuss this later on when Vasily is introducing the research roadmaps, but we felt this is a, a really a core element when it comes to balancing, when it comes to value drains, so we will include it in the model. And we built on existing pools and real transaction. The, the motivation here was to first, we wanted to have a way to verify the pool functionality and results. So, okay, if we take an, an actual pool, we can easily verify if the model works properly. Then, um, of course, it's interesting to dig into actual pools and get access to uh, metrics that are relevant. And then step-by-step step complexify the model via, for example, adding, injecting synthetic transactions, uh, synthetic agent behavior, and other, or um, adapting parameters. And let me show you some of the metrics you have access to via the simulation output um, in the first notebooks, metrics like um, the development of pool shares over time, so liquidity added and removed. Um, this is a um, wrapped ether die pool in this case, or um, the balances. Here we have the curve of uh, the, the actual amount of tokens in die in the pool and in wrapped ether in the pool. And as you can see, um, this is a relevant metric to um, evaluate the, the healthiness and growth. So overall, it looks like the, the pool is growing. If you just look at the TVL, for example, here. And if you dig into the balances, you can also see, okay, if certain tokens um, are, in a way, swapped out of the pool and decreasing. And yeah, as shown here, you are able to compare the US dollar value of tokens in this pool, the TVL, uh, total value locked, and compare it, for example, with the invariant, which is, again, a different metric to rate the value development in the pool. Um, you can find it also in the article Understanding Balancer Pools, so the invariant as a metric um, showing the pool's energy and where you, can, where you have a very good insight in, in the healthiness uh, and growth of a pool. Another metric is, for example, fees and having access on the for example, fee value contribution to a pool. So with every swap or join swap events, fees are collected and adding added to the pool liquidity. And in this case, DAI fees contribute way more than wrapped ether fees. Or analyze fees per day in US dollar or in balances, depending on your research question, or what we all is um, the type of actions happening in the pool. And in this case, we clearly see, okay, swaps are really predominant. Here we have numbers. 
uh, in this pool. And the second action we have here are external price updates. And this is, a, I'd say, a specific approach and metric we can access um, because of the system's architecture. And Andrew will now talk a little bit about the design and system architecture of balance of simulations. Yes, well, while writing the code, we tried to make it modular and reusable, easy to understand. Of course, we aim for these goals. And then we um, realized that we needed to get some real data um, about what happened on the Ethereum blockchain um, and verify our simulation was behaving properly before we started to do anything fancy on top of it. So what we have right now is the first Lego piece. Um, <clears throat> so the role of the policies in our simulation is to describe why the state changes. And the state changes right now in this uh, simulation for one reason, historical input data that we got from Ethereum. Um, since the simulation does not know anything about Ethereum transactions, we created a new concept called action. So an action is basically anything that affects the state of a pool. And this is all in one big JSON file. And uh, this action decoder class will read the JSON file. Uh, it is the driving function for the um, driving process <coughs> for the CAD-CAD uh, simulation. Now, there are three modes in which the action decoder can operate. Um, the first one, it basically uses data from Ethereum ETL on Google BigQuery. You get this with a simple SQL query. The second one relies on that and some extra data, which you can only get from an Ethereum archive node. Plot output is basically playback mode, um, where in the first two modes, we took what happened on the Ethereum um, um, on the Ethereum blockchain, and then we plug that into our simulated balancer v1 smart contract, and then we record what the simulation spits out. And in plot output mode, it's basically playback mode. Uh, we also know what the real smart contract on Ethereum spit out. And so we don't pass, we don't actually put anything into our simulated smart contract. So in the end, we found that um, none of these modes really made a difference. Uh, we were all within less of 1% error uh, for each other. Um, so yes, that depends. I guess that's good enough for most purposes. So because of these three modes, um, our policy, P action decoder, is just a front. It redirects to these three other action decoders, depending on the mode, which is set in uh, CAD CAD params. So these policy functions will emit a policy output signal, which is to be passed to the state update function. And two examples of these are on the right. So the bottom right one, is basically nothing is happening to the pool. We are just updating the price. We do this every five minutes. And the top right one is a signal to the pool to execute a join swap extern amount in and the parameters. And this is a class and the parameters are included inside this class. Go on. So similarly, um, the state update function, the single state update function that updates the pool variable is just a front. Or apparently as they call, as they say within design patterns, a facade. It uh, redirects to the actual state update function, um, which does all that stuff, the real stuff. Next slide. 
So here is a totally different way of thinking about the structure of our model. Uh, this diagram was created by Raul. Firstly, just ignore everything on the bottom left side and focus on the actions.json leading to the action decoder on top. This is the historical data input, and then it um, changes this these particular state variables. Actually, there should be an arrow pointing uh, from the action decoder to the pool state as well, but oh well. And so where your where the model Lego comes in is that you can put in additional policies there, such as the upcoming arbitrage agent. And um, yes, that's how you can plug stuff into it. The dynamic weight change policy, uh, we're having second thoughts about implementing that as a policy, more on that later. So if you want any third party agent based things, like you wanna say put uh, an exchange and somehow have it interact with a pool, you put it there in the policies. So one big design decision that we made was to keep the pool as one object for many reasons. We know that in CAD CAD, you are supposed to have all your state variables lined out flat um, and easy um, for easy access. In our case, we found there were many, many good reasons for encapsulating all of um, the state of the pool into one pool object. We'll talk about that on the next slide. The action decoder policy, um, the historical data input policy doesn't really, isn't really a pol it doesn't really decide what to do, but it actually converts an action into what we call opcodes, uh, what I personally call opcodes. And so as CAD-CAD has a policy output signal, um, this opcode thing is our way of having a standard policy output signal for a particular state variable, in this case, the pool state variable. And um, so if you want to change, if you want to do anything on the pool, all you have to do is figure out how to emit these opcodes from your policy and um, the pool will change accordingly. So since we have all those uh, important information about the pool in one single state variable, um, the post-processing uh, basically unpacks the, the state variable into different columns so that it's easy for Angela to plot. And uh, it also calculates a lot of um, derived metrics from it. So on the left, oh, sorry, go back. So um, on the left, you see an action JSON object that you, that you would get inside uh, the JSON file. And then this is converted into a tuple of two classes, uh, join params input and join params output. So this is the opcodes that I was talking about. So yes, we um, on the right, you have an example of what the state looks like at any particular substep. So we have an action type, the gas cost, I'm not really sure if we use that. Um, the pool, uh, as you can see, is one big dictionary that is inside the state variable. Um, why did we do that? Well, uh, the biggest reason was that um, lots of variables would be affected in one operation. So if we do the balance of math, then we'd have to change many variables at once, but uh, in CAD CAD, you can only change one um, state variable um, per state update function. So we just put that all into one class. Um, also, this way you could have multiple pools within this one simulation. So you get pool one or pool two or pool three in the state uh, variables. Also, when you're writing 
the soft the, the program, it is just easier to access the the structured data um, when you're uh, in this way. Otherwise, you have to remember which column was what name, and nobody wants to do that. So spot prices. So yes, what are spot prices, and why are they outside the pool state variable? So if you look at the very bottom, you have another state variable called token prices. This is the price in USD that the outside world, say like other exchanges or TradingView, um, says that each token is worth. Now, if you go to the balancer pool to, let's say, uh, execute an arbitrage uh, swap, you will find that the balancer pool has its own prices for these tokens. And this comes from how many of those tokens it has inside the pool and what is the weight of each. So that is spot prices. We call those spot prices. And uh, this is a calculated metric that we put, that we chose to put out, outside the, the pool thing in a state variable um, because we can. So yes. You can see how the state update functions. While the policy describes why the state should would change, the state update functions describe how the state changes. Uh, next slide. So in order, I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about the CAD-CAD simulation, but it turns out um, uh, Producing the actions JSON file was a huge project in itself. We wanted to plug in uh, historical data, and we also wanted to get the extra data from the Ethereum archive node. That was um, important to know how accurate our simulations really were. The problem is uh, this anonymous event um, was only available on the Ethereum archive node, and uh, it was undocumented, so Raul uh, spent several nights um, reverse engineering it and found that in the end, um, we didn't really get much of an accuracy gain. Next slide. As I mentioned before, our Balancer V1 simulation does not know anything about transactions. It does not know anything about time. It just knows that there are actions and these actions come in whenever they come in and they have a timestamp associated with them. So an action is anything that affects uh, the pool, a join, swap, exit, fee change, weight change. Um, we decided to make, yes, uh, price changes of tokens are also um, an action. The, so let's say I, I have I joined this pool and I got some pool shares in return. And if I transfer these pool shares to another person, it does not count as an action because this has nothing to do with the pool itself. It's just me transferring its shares around elsewhere. Next slide. So, On the right, you have an example of a complete action that you would get um, once you combine all the stuff from BigQuery, SQL, and, and uh, the Ethereum archive node. And this and the action decoder simplified mode only pays attention to the very last part, which is the action object in the JSON. The contract call mode pays attention to the action and the contract call uh, objects. And uh, yes, um, for the pricing data, we had to have a totally uh, different uh, part for that too. Um, we have TradingView and CoinGecko uh, sources and uh, filtering the data, uh, the pricing data, which in CoinGecko was not very organized. It's, it does not come in exactly at five minute intervals. Uh, it comes in at whatever interval it is in, but it's always more or less. So you have to do some binning. 
So yes, I wrote a whole article on that too. Next slide. Yeah, Angela, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can't hear you, but I see that you can. Yeah, great. So yeah, let's go to the next slide, please. First of all, so yeah, so Balance Review 1, it is an ecosystem mainly of you know pools that uh, don't change their main parameters after launch. So these pools are deployed, people use them for trading and so on and so forth. But uh, at the moment, space is boiling up with the new concept, dynamic IMM. So dynamic IMM is an IMM that adjusts parameters during operation based on some external controlling signals or internal controlling signals. It depends on the type of this dynamic IMM. So the main idea of this dynamic IMM is that, okay, guys, we can change some parameters during the pool operation without redeploying this pool with particular goals. For example, maximize uh, liquidity provider, uh, capital gains, decrease in permanent loss and so on and so forth. So at the moment, I think all people know about the permanent loss program. And for example, the uh, couple of articles that prove that we can like mitigate this problem or at least decrease it seriously using dynamic ways changing approach. And when we're talking about two tokens, it is not so interesting, but uh, when the when, when, when it comes to complex pools, like four tokens, five tokens, even eight or 10 tokens, uh like some indices or etf products it is very important because the index performance uh, can be you know significantly limited due to this implement loss program and arbitration and so on so and, uh, at the moment there are like a bunch of projects that are building different dynamic imms so we can distinguish them into two big groups uh one group is open loop uh, control uh, dynamic imm so uh, this group uh, is based on external controlling signals, for example, uh, price feed from Oracle or something like that. Uh, and so it relies on some information that not exists inside this AMM and is supplied by some, you know, other agent or object or service. So, and closed loop dynamic AMM in opposite uses only the data uh, inside IMM. And the good example of closed loop dynamic IMM is uh, Kiberg. Uh, Kyber Network DMM that was launched yesterday in beta in mainnet. So and uh, they change fees, they change uh, your off a little bit based on uh, that uh, based on trades inside the pool, trying to improve IMM like using this. So and Bancor 2.1 also is a good example of uh, dynamic MM of closed loop dynamic MM that solves this implement loss problem, and this is reflected in the TVL growth, that is fantastic at the moment. So next slide. So this is uh, an example just for demonstration. We have a pool in uh, like balance review one pool with three tokens, ETH, WBTC and BAL. And for example, we decided to change weights over time. So this is a chart how we can change weights. So uh, talking about balance review two, it is really interesting because it offers much more flexibility. So uh, like different teams and people can deploy pools with custom logic. So because the custody and the pool logic is se separated now, so you can make different way changing models and so on and so forth. So it is all up to you how to design your pool from balance review two. And we think that it can lead to a lot of new products. So for example, uh, we can have an input signal like market cap, TVL, or in the other metric. We can. Uh, we need to have parameter adjustment strategy. So how exactly we will change, for example, weights or fees. Uh, after that, you have pool controller. I mean, it is uh, not about CatCard implementation. It is about how it really works in mainnet. So because in CatCard we are making simulations, but we need to understand how it really works. So we have pool controller, and this pool controller uh, adjusts parameters of real balancer pool uh, periodically. And so this is how the dynamic IMM works. Uh, next slide. So for our research roadmap, we have uh, several topics. So we want to analyze dynamic MM pools in general. The second, uh, I think, very important problem is to find optimal way of changing strategies according to our requirements. For example, minimize the permanent loss, maximize uh, capital gain of liquidity providers, uh, solving this uh, problem of selling winners, buying losers, because when somebody arbitrates in IMM pool, he supplies cheap token. I mean, cheap on external market and uh, get back 
uh, token that is more expensive and, for example, arbitrage it and drain value from the pool during this process. So, for example, we want to minimize this. So for this, uh, yeah, also we are thinking about optimal fees and closed loop system modeling. So we will work on open loop and closed loop together. So uh, for this, we have balancer MM contract model that uh, was already presented. Also arbitrage policies. So we constructed our own arbitrage algorithm based on real on-chain data. So we explored on-chain data, how arbitrageurs work, what, for, what functions they use to swap in the pool and so on and so forth. And after that, made an algorithm how to detect most profitable trade and optimize the trade size. Because I think all people here understand that uh, in IMM, trade size uh, change slippage, price, and so on. And so uh, to evaluate profitability, you need to optimize trade size and find the most optimal trade size according to current, for example, gas costs, slippage, fees, and so on. So, yeah. and. Uh, as an example of dynamic MM that already work in mainnet is PowerPool. Uh, so I'm a board member from, Power, from PowerPool and they have market cap adjusted weights, TVL uh, based weights for some uh, sort of synthetic uh, pool with cash flow generating tokens where TVL is the sort of market cap. And even market cap with a bundler, the, 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 the strategy that allows the pool himself uh, buy or sell tokens. Uh, at the moment, weight changing using one inch exchange to adjust weights and balances simultaneously and not allow arbitrageurs to drain value from the pool. Yeah, so and here we, we can see a scheme. So we have external market prices, we have arbitrageur uh, that trades with the pool all the time trying to find profitable trades. And at the same time, we have, for example, for open loop system, uh, we calculate market caps based on external market prices and change weights all the time. And try to optimize this. Yeah. So and the search of optimal strategies is uh, the main research topic. Yeah. Angela. Yeah. About model Liga, I think uh, Andrew, you should start here. So. Um, when Raúl floated the idea of model Lego, I was thinking actually of having a, a cat cat simulation of something and then I plug in a cat cat simulation of something totally different like an exchange but uh, uh, that's not quite what he meant what he meant was that um, we have this simulation of a balancer uh, pool and that we can add extra functionality onto it um, and an exchange would be represented as a policy with perhaps simplified its own encapsulated strategy inside it. Um, and that would be a Lego block. So one of the, so there are many things which I feel that CADCAD could improve upon. Um, mostly the theme is that um, to enable more composability, CADCAD should be a bit stricter about things, for instance, uh, enforcing no state updates and policies. Uh, we were actually updating the state inside a policy and there was nothing stopping us from doing so. Um, um, and also, yes, uh, there is a fine balance because this is an early stage, because uh, this is all very early in this field. Uh, we need to find uh, what really is the best uh, practice before we start nudging people towards a specific direction um, by making it only possible to do it this way inside CAD CAD. But this is uh, one of the th things which I can, uh, which we can think about. So for instance, whenever I write a CAD CAD simulation, um, unless it's a simple one, I always end up needing to put some kind of object inside the state variable. And once you do that, you're on your own because CADCAD doesn't manage state. Um, uh, CADCAD does not manage policy output signals for you then. So um, I think it would be nice if uh, there was a standard for a policy output signal standard 
for state update functions that have to modify objects. So if you have a state update function that modifies an object, then um, you should kind of have a standard for, for talking to it. Um, it's easy enough with a single variable, but for objects, uh, that, that should be a standard for this. It's also kind of difficult to decide what is what should be in an object and what should be out of it. Some guidelines uh, would be uh, nice here. Uh, once we have um, once more CAD CAD simulations have been written and we find what works best. As I wanted to write stuff, I find myself trying very hard to keep functionality in Python and away from CAD CAD because I can do more. It's just more composable with all the software tricks, uh, the, the programming tricks available to me. In the end, I, I kind of used CAD CAD as a task runner. It's a, it's a simulation framework, of course, but imagine this, this, this climbing framework in the playground over there. So you see it's this big yellow thing with um, little red ropes in between so that your children aren't really taking a leap of faith before they can grab hold of the yellow bar. So that's kind of what I feel like CAD CAD is right now. It's a framework and it's a bit too empty. Um, I need to take a leap of faith, um, probably sacrifice some. Um, uh, a week or two of work if I make the wrong design design choice. Um, uh, yes, it's basically the yellow frame without the red ropes there. Um, yes, and Vasily, you should talk about that. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to add that at the moment it seems that uh, the you know the entrance level that you need to you know to un understand Python, card card, and so on and so forth is very high for simulations. I mean, for general broad community, because for example, in, in PowerPoint community, we have several guys that want to test their own strategies. Like in Wi-Fi community, they have like strategies for walls and in PowerPoint, we have some guys who want to test dynamic MM ideas, but they cannot do it themselves because it's too complex. And I think that such model Lego will allow them to like, onboard fast and uh, have a chance to design something new because uh, like talking about IMMs at the moment, we should, like abstract our vision and move from protocol tokens and all this you know, basic stuff because at the moment it looks like that uh, pools will be like for example balancer pools will be used not only for protocol tokens like balancer itself or compound or other but also for complex derivative tokens options futures and all this uh, defy composability stuff because the level of composability is extreme and so for all this you know strange types of assets for example that ca generate cash flows or have you know rebases, for example, or something else? You need to have dynamic MM strategies, and all, and often all uh, only people who are deeply inside this particular little ma market segment can understand how to define the rules in this dynamic MM to make this product work and you know not lose people's money as it often is. And as we see, for example, in Fe <laughs> uh recently, yeah. So this is something that allows you know involve here much more broader community that we have at the moment. So Angela, we are going. Okay, questions. so I guess, <clears throat> yeah, I guess we can take some questions. Not sure, uh, uh, Jeff, up to you to decide, time-wise. Yeah, I, yeah I, if you have something, you have to, something to invite, invite for, for uh, further, uh, touch further touch points, points joining the reachers, joining the reachers group, or whatnot. or whatnot, and then I and figured, then I figured probably, there's probably a few questions, a few questions out there we can leave the, the last the last few minutes, minutes for anyone for anyone who had any clarifying, had any clarifying questions. questions. It's question time right now, or something else. Yeah. Uh, question for Andrew. Uh, um, did I get it right that you you're using mostly static data from from the from the SQL database, or can you actually use static data and and on chain real time data? 
Can you can you use no no they're all real time data. So you have to run the the data pooling script beforehand. It does a lot of like data what, processing. What would it take to use real time data? Actually, actually, I think, I think there's, there's some, some work. Entire overhaul of the entire this system. <laughs> so doing it a bit off, not so real time would be advisable to just call like as long as you can collect it, put it to SQL, process it, and then run it. So that could be minutes from real time, or not. Well, I have no idea how often Ethereum ETL puts data into Google BigQuery, but you are basically limited by that. Otherwise, you can uh, run an Ethereum archive node and um, pull all the data that you want from it. But um, but then you have to sort and filter out a lot of the stuff yourself, which is why we had big query for most of the stuff. And, and yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to add that, uh, you know, that this question looks like an additional research project because uh, pulling on-chain data was a complex question for, for our team and uh, this real-time data from on-chain, uh, from Ethereum node and also uh, real-time prices, for example, from external markets, these two things can be really amazing, but uh, like we need additional resources to build that, I think, and probably somebody from community can contribute in this. Well, near real time is good enough for some instances, but can you can you also tap to other other streams like not just Ethereum but other other pools of data? That would be amazing too. There's some there's work some work being, being, done, being done, done in other in streams, streams about incorporating, about incorporating uh, data uh, streams, data streams from, from the graph, from the graph and, and porting those porting right, right into, into CAD CAD, CAD, CAD to, have to have live system data, data and forming, forming the model. The model. Um, I don't I don't know how that relates particularly to this model, but, but in related, in related research, research that is going on. Cool. Thank you. Yes, yes. So I just want to comment that a little bit. So at the moment, uh, we can create synthetic pool. I mean, not download the data from Ethereum a chain, but we can ju just create a pool, for example, with these particular four tokens. Uh, add balances there and start to play with it. For example, provide external price and enable arbitrage agent, and he will start to trade in this pool and adjust you know, balances according to external price movements. And after that, for example, we can add something else like way changing algorithm. So so basically, uh, if you don't have some like real time data, you can just uh, pick the market period, for example, high volatility, low volatility, I don't know, pump, dump, anything you want for these tokens that you have inside the pool, add this price external signals and start to play with it. So the real time data is not necessary. Yeah. But high resolution uh, pricing data is de usually deleted after three months, even from TradingView Pro and CoinGecko. So you should start gathering those prices while you can. I also thought, I also it, was thought it was a really interesting, interesting point, point uh, that you uh, made, that you Andrew, made Andrew, Andrew, about, about there's nothing, there's in, nothing cat, in CAT stopping, cat stopping you from, from, for example, for example updating, updating a policy where, where you, should where you be. shouldn't be. Um, um, and, and, and I'm, I'm curious, curious your guys' your thoughts, thoughts and, and, your, and your experience, experience with, the with the tool so far, so far. How, we can, how we can kind of create, create more, more tangible bounds on these models, not just in terms of how you use CAT, but how you use the model model to... Generate a generate understanding, understanding for deployments, deployments down the line. Down the line. Um, um, like for like example, for example, we've had, we've had models models initialized, initialized outside of their, outside of their boundary, condition, boundary conditions. But it wasn't, but it wasn't we weren't able we weren't to, able to kind of like kind of like guide, guide that process, that process because, because of the you know, as you say as this you say this early is an early kind of framework kind of framework um, um, architecture, architecture. So, so yeah, I'm curious, yeah, I'm your, curious thoughts your thoughts on how we build those build those how we how we make these make these models more useful more useful to, to the people who will be people using them down the line, making them more clear where they're where they're useful and where they're not. Because obviously, all models, all models are, just are just models, and they're and useful, they're useful within, their within their bounds outside, outside of, their, of their bounds. They can be they can be dangerous. Even dangerous. So, so I'm curious, I'm curious your thoughts your thoughts not necessarily right now, but how we how we move forward in this ecosystem and kind of build and build in those protections for people who are going to use these models to make to make decisions. I think uh, there are several questions wrapped up in your question here. I was talking about the ease of model composability 
and I think you were talking about about how to write a model so that it actually delivers some proper insights, um, which thankfully in this case, I didn't really have to deal with that. Um, but um, one thing I, I heard that uh, would be, is very useful to have a mathematical model and then you verify that mathematical model and then the simulation is just an expression of that mathematical model. And once you uh, verify that it works according to the math, then, then I guess you just have to trust that this is the answer that you got. Um, if you want to simulate like, like emergent behaviors, I suppose, then there, then I have no idea how to know if that really is the emergent behavior you'd get if you put in the real world. I think this is think where, this we, is can where we can to start do, to do. So there's so two, there's two areas that areas CAD, CAD models, CAD models are, are really helpful, really helpful. In, the design, in the design of the ecosystem, of the ecosystem and then also, and then also in the, also in the uh, ongoing, ongoing maintenance, maintenance and, and, kind, and, of, and um, kind of um, uh, decision, decision support, support in a live, in a live system. system. So once we, so once I mean, we, in the, I mean, in the design system, design system we, have we have very little real, real world data, data to go off. To go a off. lot of our, lot of our signals are generated, generated. Our agent our behaviors are generated, generated. And they're kind, and they're kind of like working off of the assumptions, the assumptions that we bake, that we bake into the model. Into the model. Uh, but then once, but then once the system, system goes live, we can start, can start Iterating, iterating those strategies, those strategies and, and building in, building the, in real the real world signals, world signals using, like, using like uh, the graph, uh, the graph, for example, feeding in feeding actual, in actual agent agent behaviors, behaviors, and then and then having uh, having potentially, potentially machine learning, learning, models, learning models iterating, iterating you know, the agent you know, the behaviors, behaviors that match, that match what, what's, what's happening, happening in the live system, system um, which of um, course which is, of another, is another layer of layer of complexity, complexity entirely. entirely. Um, but, um, but long term, long -term this is where these models can, can, can be really useful, really useful as counterfactual, counterfactual analysis, analysis. Building in building not, just, not just the assumptions, the assumptions controls, the controls of the system, but also, but also live data live data streams and live agent behaviors. That's where I think it gets really interesting. Um. For designing a system, I am not sure because if you design a system and then you implement it in CAD CAD uh, and then suddenly you decide you want to change the design, then um, the implementation already has these assumptions. So it takes longer to change the, the implementation. So I am not sure that this would provide any speed benefit. Um, compared to just, you know, trying stuff out in real life. I think that's what test nets are for. Um, so that would probably be more efficient to do it that way. Quick, quick question on somewhere related. You, you guys have to translate uh, balancer solidity language into CAD CAD. So that's what I gathered from, from previous. Is there a way to convert it back into solidity from CAD CAD? Or do you envision a way that could be facilitate what we just discussed right now? So you can go in and out quickly out of CatCat -Cat into backing so solidity? I'll, um, Raul converted the solidity code into Python. So I wouldn't know, but we had uh, lots of small math discrepancies, uh, which might uh, hinder you, not necessarily prevent you, but hinder you from converting between these languages cool thank you i think it it's not at at the stage where we say okay let's let's model it and then push a button and it's uh it's re recreated in solidity this would be awesome on the on this okay why building a digital twin i guess this is still a matter of exploration and this is also what we want to see in balance the simulations so Certainly, there are benefits of using a Python model. Um, so you are able to just use and, and plug in libraries um, for, for uh, machine learning into your model. You are pretty quick in, um, I would say, yes, for design decisions like we have it now for dynamic weights changing, what strategy works best to verify your assumptions. That's really cool. At the same time, of course, for maintenance, we have to keep in mind that a Python digital twin is limited, particularly in cases where the real network is, has an, important, is an important factor 
to the to the results or to the the research questions you might have. So I guess uh, this will be an ongoing uh, discussion and also um, a matter for token engineers to find what's the best tool and what's the best setup for answering research questions. Is it CatCat? Is it Python? Are there other means? Yeah, def yeah definitely. I think CatCat Cat Cat plays, Cat Cat plays is, 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 is a tool, is a in, tool this in this pipeline. It's kind of the it's bazooka. Kind of the bazooka. Um, um, there's definitely, there's ways, definitely you ways you can test your, test assumptions, your assumptions without going, without to, going the extreme to the extreme of CatCat. Cat. Cat. Um, but there's, um, kind, but of there's kind of like, this, like, um, um, you, know, you can start, you know, you can start with, an Excel, with an Excel model. model. Um, you, can um, use, you can use Python and JavaScript, and, JavaScript and, a lot of other, and a lot of other data science, data science tools. And CatCat is kind of taking it to the extreme where you have multi-scale, multi-agent, you know, and degree and complexity, degree complexity system, system um, that these um, other that these tools, other tools don't, don't provide you provide the solutions, you solutions for. for. This is when this you, is when you bring, out the, bring out the big guns. Um, but um, also, but important also important to, to you know you know experiment experiment at small scales and, 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 and do you know these you know these these um, yeah simpler yeah, simpler models as, models, as, 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 as they, we've made the we've made the point through this this presentation presentation these are Lego Legos. We start we start with these kind of small models and. And over time, over time, we can, we can compose, compose these models. These models. I, think I think that was a really great point that you, that you, you made, um, Andrew, about Andrew, about making sure, making sure models are composable. Are composable and, and when we when we can violate, can violate rules in these rules in these small Lego blocks, Lego blocks when we when we compose Lego blocks into bigger models, models, this could this could have, have yeah, compounding, yeah, compounding issues, issues, issues in larger in models, larger models. So, so yeah, really, yeah, really interested to see where see where this this new this new space takes us and all of the data the data driven decision decision making we can make can make in complex complex systems that we just, that we just don't have access, access to, today. to today so yeah really yeah, exciting really future. Exciting future any uh, any, uh, final, any questions final questions or, or concluding concluding thoughts, thoughts from, from the, the presenting, presenting team, team? Cool. Cool. Well, we are a few, minutes, a few over minutes over the hour. So I apologize. I, apologize. I wasn't strict, uh, strict on cutting. I, cutting. I, cutting. I hope anyone had anyone place had to be, place to be. They were able to just drop. But, but yeah, yeah. I'll post, I'll post the recording, recording to this call in the Cat, in Cat, Cat, Cat Discord. Discord. For anyone who's, for anyone who's new to this community, community please feel free to dig around. Dig around. We've got a bunch of older, older presentations and models, and lots and lots of information in the Discord forum. Forum. And yeah, we yeah we look forward to any further questions and and insights that come out come out of this research in the future, in the future as, well. as well um jeff what channel should i use to share the links we uh you can uh, drop you them, can in, drop the them CAD, in the CAD, CAD, CAD general, general channel, channel i think, I think. okay mm -hmm. it'd be great it'd be great and i'll drop and i'll drop recording, recording there, as well. there as well all right thanks so much thanks for your so much time, for your everybody. time everybody. everybody thanks for having us see you, at the, see next you at the next community, community call, call. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. See you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, guys.